The New York Times reports that Maryland Governor Larry Hogan, former chair of the Republican Governors Association, said yesterday his state is flying blind in the fight against the coronavirus disease because officials did not have enough tests and that the president's comments suggesting that a lack of test kits was no longer a problem are just not true. In Connecticut, Governor Ned Lamont yesterday described news of a national stockpile of medical supplies running empty as disturbing, adding, quote, we are on our own. So, Mike Barnacle, I'm sure you're hearing the same thing up in the state of Massachusetts. These governors have for weeks now been screaming from the mountaintops about what they need. They're getting some of it, but their process has been very difficult. There's got to be a better way to streamline the supply chain to get the things into the hospital that are saving lives. Yeah, Willie, thank God for some of these governors, Charlie Baker in Massachusetts, Andrew Cuomo in New York, obviously, the governors of California, Governor Whitmer in Michigan, Governor Hogan in Maryland. Thank God for them because they have their hands on the tools of government every single day. They know how government operates and they know how to get things done using the state governments. Part of our problem in this country, and it's really come full circle right now, we have a 35-year history in this country in the policy politics of this country of trying to diminish the role of government at the federal level. It began with, you know, government is the problem, and it ends with Steve Bannon just a few years ago saying the, the principal objective of the Trump administration is going to be de <clears throat> to deconstruct the existing apparatus of government. So what happens when you deconstruct the apparatuses of government, you get things that was just described by Andrew Cuomo. You have different federal agencies bidding up different personal protection equipment that the states need. You have chaos in government. And I have to tell you, my bias is for government. I come from a family of school teachers, nurses, cops, FBI agents, firefighters. That's my background. That's my family's background. And I resent the attack on government because government is what comes down the street to put the fire out in your house. Government comes down the street to provide testing if testing is available. It's all one thing, all one thing encompassed in the word called government. And we don't have enough of it at the federal level. Yeah, you know, uh, Claire McCaskill, um, Mike's exactly right. Uh, Steve Bannon talked about deconstructing the apparatus of government. This is what happens when you deconstruct the apparatus of government. Uh, I think it was Grover Norquist that said something like uh, uh, wanting to drown the baby of, of the federal government in the bathtub, uh, gutting the spin. I don't know the exact word, but it was something really harsh like that. Um, and if it if that if he didn't say it exactly that way, oh, I'll, I'll get the exact quote. Um, but I will tell you, I'm a small government conservative and Mika can attest to the fact that I've been going around for the past decade warning Republicans that they can't just gut the 12 percent of the budget, which is discretionary domestic spending. Now, when I say that, of course, people's eyes have glazed over. Like, okay, hey, okay, thank you. But all of their cuts, all of their cuts while they were ramping up defense spending came from gutting the NIH, came from gutting the pandemic test force, came from gutting education, came from gutting the 10, 11, 12 percent, what, what we Americans consider to be government. You know, of course, you've had Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, defense spending and interest on the debt that takes up the overwhelming majority of the rest of the budget. But Republicans for the past decade have just been gutting the parts of government that help the American people live. And it's not gotten them any closer to balancing the budget. It's just left us ill prepared and shattered at a nation at this time of unparalleled crisis. Yeah. And, you know, it's really interesting to me, if you look at the way government should be functioning now, we should have a president who is turning to two agencies, um, the Department of Homeland Security and HHS. Look at those two agencies and what has happened there. At HHS, you have the head of the agency fighting with another high-ranking official in the agency to see who can get closer to the president by the podium. 
Uh, they're arguing about their power and they're arguing about their image and they're both doing everything they can, not focused as much as they should be on their responsibility, but rather focused on pleasing the leader. And then you have the Department of Homeland Security, where we have had such a turnover and where all of the levers of power in that agency have been turned toward one issue, and that is the political issue of immigration, as opposed to all of the other responsibilities of the Department of Homeland Security. A normal presidency with a different culture would have immediately figured out how do we First of all, use the power to get what the healthcare industry needs to protect themselves and therefore to protect the public. And how do we get enough tests? And how do we make sure that there's not profiteering going on? Profiteering right. at this moment should be rooted out, pulled up, and absolutely gone after with a two by four. And the profiteering these governors are describing on trying to buy things like ventilators and masks and, and PPE uh, uh, uniforms. This is unbelievable that the president mm -hmm. isn't saying, okay, stop everyone. We're gonna get this stuff. We're gonna distribute it based on need and be very transparent about it. The country would breathe a collective sigh of relief over that kind of federal power being used right now. They wouldn't in any way be critical of it. Well, and, and that's exactly why people have been begging the president for weeks to implement the Defense Production Act, because what the governors warned the president about weeks ago, that they were having to compete against each other and compete against the federal government, has happened. It's driving up the price for everything. The president can stop that tomorrow. And I've heard the president say several times that he was not going to compete with states. The federal government wouldn't compete with states because that would just drive up the price. They're still doing it, and it's still driving up the price. Mike Barnacle, I just wanted to follow up. Alex uh, sent me actually the quote from Grover Norquist. He said, I don't want to abolish government. I simply want to reduce it to the size where I can drag it into the bathroom and drown it in the bathtub. Well, that's exactly what's yeah, happened nice. with the NIH. Nice. That's, that's exactly what's happened with the pandemic task force. That's exactly what's happened again with that 12 percent of the federal government, the domestic discretionary spending part, small part of that pie that Republicans have only had the political will to cut. They, of course, expanding the defense budget uh, at, at, at record rates, uh, passing record tax cuts, being fiscally reckless and then gutting the small part of the federal budget that actually would be saving lives right now, Mike. Well, Grover, uh, who grew up about 15 miles from where I'm sitting here right now this morning, uh, should be pleased with his efforts because they have been quite successful. And I can know that you know that they're quite successful when you talk to emergency room nurses or, or doctors or people in hospitals who don't have enough protection equipment, who don't have the, the kind of gloves, the kind of masks that they've needed now for months because government has been so inefficient in delivering these things. And I might remind Grover to go around to a hospital and talk to these people at the appropriate distance, of course, and then ask yourself, is this really the United States? United States of America? Are you telling me in the United States of America in the year 2020 that we cannot provide nurses and doctors with personal protection equipment needed to combat this virus without putting their lives on the line every day, which they do? But this is the United States of America 2020, thanks to the efforts of people like Grover Norquist, Newt Gingrich, who began this whole thing, in my, in my estimation, in the mid-1980s. And this is where we are today, Joe. Yeah, and I'll tell you, Mika, I'm a small government conservative. I've been fighting for balanced budgets my entire life. I'm still a small government conservative. But you've got to keep the part of the budget that actually helps the American people. And again, it's something I've been warning about for a decade now. It's something that other conservatives have been, small government conservatives have been warning about for a decade now. You can't jack up defense spending to, to record levels. You can't jack up tax cuts uh, that, that, that end up not helping the economy in the long run. You can't do all that while gutting the NIH, while, while, while gutting 
again, a pandemic task force forces abolishing them. You can't deconstruct the government the way Steve Bannon said he wanted to deconstruct the government without having this sort of impact there. I, I, I don't want a big, huge, massive runaway government, uh, even though that's what Donald Trump has given us. I, I, I want I want an efficient government. I want uh, a, a smart government. I want a government that pays attention to that 12 percent and grows out the parts, makes the investments that actually protects Americans and protects us moving forward as well. That's not been done and we're paying the price. Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube and make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories and you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.